Uh, I've been at Halo for uh, three years now, but I've been in post-production for about 21 years, I guess. Uh, and um, yeah, I've just worked mainly in Soho in London as a, a runner to a producer, uh, into sales, and then into my commercial director role. Uh, uh, and that's where I am. That's what I'm doing now at Halo. I'm commercial director, so my boss would have, have you believe that I maximize profitability within our industry. Um, but uh, I'd like to think that um, uh, we, we like to go after an eclectic mix of, uh, of different types of work. Halo's an independent, one of the last independent post houses in London and um, we do a bit of everything and I think that's what makes us special. Yeah, I've been at Halo for seven years now. I've been in post-production for 25 years um, and I sort of mainly look after the film and the drama side of things at Halo. Well, my, my role is head of film um, and so I, I kind of help develop the commercial side of the film and the drama work that we do. But I also, I've come from a technical background, so I, I also help to sort of manage some of the projects as they go through. The main advantage of being an independent is um, we, we kind of have a very friendly boutique operation and we're very quick to respond to changes in the market. So if we need to buy some new equipment or we need to sort of look at a new type of work, you know, VR or whatever the latest thing is, we can be very quick to respond to that. But we don't obviously have big investments, so if we do have to make a lot of capital expenditure in a new technology, it takes us a little bit longer maybe to raise that money to spend on the equipment. Halo is, doesn't have a corporate bone in its body, and um, there are disadvantages and advantages to that. But um, uh, as Dave says, it means we can be very agile within the market. We have no corporate uh, hierarchy to, uh, to delay decisions. We can make decisions very quickly. But creatively, we're bringing a lot to the table in terms of sound design and mixing, visual effects, um, grading, um, and it's as you'll see from our masterclass tomorrow. You know, the before and after is quite staggering, actually. I would say again, Halo, due to its independence, has a very collaborative uh, relationship with its clients. Um, we're very much. Uh, seen as, uh, as a partner rather than a, a client-supplier relationship. So uh, I think our clients feel comfortable to invite us into the uh, into that kind of ideas uh, arena. Uh, the film festivals we really try and, and get to, um, it's important to have a presence here and, and meet the filmmakers and, and all the you know the crew that uh, and every aspect of um, of the filmmaking process and and kind of spread the halo name. Um. I think in London we're, we're quite insular, so we don't necessarily look to Europe particularly. And what is lovely about Fest is it's a great opportunity for us to have a better understanding of the kind of European TV film industry. London is very busy at the moment, and there's a lot of growth in film production, TV production, particularly with a lot of inward investment from America like Netflix and Amazon, they're coming to London. And so that's making everybody much more busy. Um, so there's a lack of skill, there's actually a shortage of skills at the moment, I would say, in London. So we're kind of, it's very important for us to recruit runners and young students who we can train up into both technical and creative areas within post-production. I would say also that you know that the technology is moving so fast at the moment that actually um, the the younger students and entry-level uh, people know almost more about it than we do. Um, it's important to hear their views. They've never you know they never grew up in a tape-based environment, so they don't know anything about that. It's the kind of the way we kind of moved in through into the industry so um, uh, you know tape uh, sorry file acquisition and now file delivery uh, is is new to us as well so we can learn as much from them as they can from us too so I think well t technically there's one bit of advice which is don't get it's not about how many pixels it's not about 4k 8k it's making sure that what you're shooting is the quality of both technically and creatively what you're shooting is as high as it can be. On a technical level, that's about 
not compressing the signal too much using um, good quality codecs, but also it's about creatively, it's about thinking about what you're going to shoot before you shoot it. So you're not shooting hours and hours of 8K footage, you know, which then causes us a problem in post-production. <laughs> you know, you need to have a good idea to begin with as well. Um, you know, it's, um, it's important that, um, uh, you know, what, the concept of what you're trying to make is strong and, um, you know, you don't um, overcomplicate it because a good idea is generally a very simple idea. Um, if you're trying to get into post specifically, I would say just get into post. I mean, it's, it's a very accessible industry, I would say. You don't need a degree uh, to get to, to start um, as an entry level runner or, or edit assistant, really. Um, as, as Dave pointed out, um, the industry is, is really growing at the moment. And um, if you have the aptitude and the enthusiasm and the drive to um, you know, to get um, uh, to get into the industry and, and start getting on the kit, whether you want to be a colorist or a sound uh, engineer or, or a dubbing mixer or, or an online editor, um, you know, there there are um, you know you can move up the ladder very quickly. I would say at the moment.